Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on resistant starch. This is a question I've gotten from many of my patients the last few months, and it's really popular in the paleo sphere right now. And I'm going to try to just break it down to the key points. What's the take-home message? What's the application? Can it or can it not benefit you? So let's, let's get into that. So again, resistant starch, a couple different types of resistant starch that we're going to cover in this chalk talk. We have type 1, which this is typically your grains your mill grains, your whole grains. I'm not a fan of going to the resistant starch type 1s because of many of the um, deleterious effects of grain, especially the protein gliadin or gluten. It tends to cause inflammation. It tends to cause leaky gut. And again, what's leaky gut? We have our tight junctions in our intestine, especially our small intestine. They're supposed to be tight. When they come untight, food particles can slip through and get into the bloodstream and create um, adverse immune reactions. So not a fan of resistant starch type 1. Let's put an X on that one. We have resistant starch type 2 and that's going to be our raw potatoes, unripe bananas, you could even do plantains and legumes. These tend to be a little bit better if you're going to do for a food source. I mean, I'm not too sure about you, but I don't really find myself uh, too attracted to unripened bananas. But it's definitely better because you at least have some more anti-inflammatory or hypoallergenic options regarding the banana or the, the plantains. I tend to gravitate towards resistant starch 3. This tends to be our, basically our cooked and cool foods. So there's a popular potato starch that's out there called Bob's Red Mill. That's a gluten-free version and it's already been cooked and cooled so the resistant starch is actually formed in the gelatinous matrix. And again, this can be dosed up into a tablespoon form and stirred in water and drunk in the morning or at night. And we'll go over the application of that in a bit, but this tends to be the best one because it's just really easy to dose it and to access it. And it's not as palatable, it's more palatable than eating raw potatoes or unripened bananas. This one starts type 4, not really applicable for this. This is a man-made chemical process. So breaking everything down, the big thing people should be focusing on are resistant starch type 2 and type 3. And now let's go over the benefits. So again, the big benefits are from bacterial changes. So we have a significant amount of bacteria in our intestinal tract, tons, lots, billions and billions and billions. Now when people typically go lower carbohydrate, they get a lot of great benefits, right? Blood sugar control, um, better insulin sensitivity, uh, you're going to get uh, weight loss because we're activating more of our fat burning enzymes. We're, we're focusing on burning more fat for fuel versus sugar for fuel. So our mood gets a lot more stable because when we're metabolizing sugar for fuel, our energy is up and down and so is our mood and our emotions. So when we're going lower carbohydrate, we have more of a fat burning type of fuel process happening, which is good. When we go low carb though, what typically happens is we have these specific bacteria in our gut called Rosburia and Erectali. These decrease on a lower carbohydrate diet according to the research. And I'll put the studies reference below and you can feel free and check PubMed for that as well. So we see this decrease in Rosburia and erectile, and then what we also see concomitantly is a decrease in butyrate. All right, and butyrate is really important. As our acidic, as our pH goes down, it goes more acidic in the gut. We're going to see significantly more butyrate come of that. And butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. So we have medium chain fatty acids like coconut oil or MCT oil. This is a short chain fatty acid, basically the same fatty acid as butter. So it's like our gut is almost fermenting homemade butter inside of our intestinal tract. So again, we have lower carbohydrate, we decrease these bacteria here, Roseburia and Erectali, and we decrease butyrate. Now our intestinal cells love butyrate. It helps lower the pH, it actually helps increase good probiotic bacteria, and it keeps the environment very inhospitable for the bad guys and very hospitable for the good guys. So again, if we go lower carbohydrate, because there are a lot of benefits by going lower carb, if we go low carb and we increase the resistant starch, ideally the type 3 because it's so easy to dose, we're going to actually increase the Roseburia and the Erectali, so we increase those good bacteria, and then we start seeing an increase in butyrate, and that's really good for all the benefits mentioned before. The insulin resistance or the insulin sensitivity benefits, the pathogenic bacteria, the good, the good um, probiotics, and also there's some benefits with SIBO that I'll go over in a bit. So again, when butyrate's up, we decrease that pH. That's really important because that provides a really good environment for good bacteria to proliferate and a bad environment for bad bacteria to proliferate. So 
more good stuff, less bad stuff, we shift and we go more into a healthy bacteria balance and away from a dysbiosis or more bad stuff in relation to good stuff. So again here, when we have extra bad bacteria or when we have lower levels of butyrate, it's possible to have SIBO. So what's SIBO? I'll probably do a whole video on this, but imagine this is our colon. I'm going to draw it in, in brown uh, just so you can visualize that. That's our colon right there, and then I'm going to use the orange to connect in where our small intestine would be. And what tends to happen is this. We tend to have bacteria that sits in the colon, and it can easily migrate back up into the small intestine. Now what butyrate is actually shown to do, it helps improve blood flow and it prevents, it prevents this bacterial overgrowth from happening. So butyrate really has a significant benefit at blocking this small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, preventing the bacteria from the colon going back up into the small intestine. And again, resistant starch will also help that. And some people may need some herbal medicine programs to help knock down that uh, high amount of bad bacteria. So again, applications. So let's review what starches are first. So we have non-specific polysaccharides. These are our soluble or unsoluble fibers. So our soluble are going to be primarily fibers from our uh, vegetable products. Celery, uh, modified citrus pectin or apple pectins or... Um, marshmallow root, all these things basically are gelatinous, soluble form of fibers. We have our unsoluble fibers. These are going to be like our psyllium husk and the bran from grains and such. I find that people who are sicker or who have intestinal issues tend to do better with the soluble. Soluble have a couple other benefits. They can bind to hormones and toxins and allow our body to excrete various chemicals and toxins better. Where unsoluble, they're more our body doesn't have the ability to break it down as much, so they tend to just add bulk to the stool. With certain patients that have gut issues, it can actually get into the diverticuli or little spots in the colon and actually create inflammation. So my bias, I tend to lean towards the soluble fibers out of these uh, nonspecific polysaccharides. And then when we look at the other half, so we have our soluble versus unsoluble, and the other side we have our resistant starch. That's what all the benefits up here were about. Resistant starch, we can use the Bob's Red Mill potato starch, and I typically recommend with my patients doing one tablespoon, one tablespoon in the morning, and one tablespoon at night. So one tablespoon times two. This tends to be very helpful and beneficial, and patients, I tend to see, they tend to start to see an improvement in their butyrate levels, it starts changing the bacterial pH in their gut, and they start seeing significant improvements. Hope this video was helpful. It's a lot of information. Feel free to check the references below. And just if you don't get anything from it, just take away the applications. Just try incorporating some of the resistant starch into your diet and see how you look, feel, and perform. And if you have more issues or more gut issues that aren't quite being addressed and you want to look a little deeper, feel free and click below to schedule the consultation. Feel free and sign up for my newsletter, my blogs, my YouTube videos, all kinds of good free info to help everyone out. Thanks. This is Dr. Justin signing off. Take care.